Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be looking at this album. It is Dark Horse by George Harrison. Now this was requested by a user on here called Movie Reviews Zane Winder. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. I will um, give a bit of background information about the album, show you the vinyl copy of it here, and then look at each track in detail. This was George Harrison's fifth solo album, but third proper release after like the Beatles broke up because he'd done like the experimental like Wonderwall music and electronic sound. But at this point in time, George Harrison was doing very well in his solo career. Like it could even be argued that he was like the most successful solo Beatle at this point in time because he had like two number one albums, um, All Things Must Pass and Living In The Material World as well as two number one singles to go along with those. So yeah, he was doing great commercially like around this time and, and like, that's not even taking into account the concert for Bangladesh, what like he performed at and like helped like organize as well and like the massive sales of that album. However, by 1974, like he began to indulge a little bit more into like this rock star sort of like lifestyle, like became like addicted like, to alcohol and like more worryingly cocaine. And like he was like growing apart like from his wife Patty Boyd and like he and like he began to have like an affair with like a secretary, uh like girl called Olivia Arias, who like of course he would like later marry and like and I think about five years later or something. The album though is probably most remembered for like a very unsuccessful US tour what like he went on in like late 1974. Harrison was the first Beatle to tour America. So like there was like very much like high expectations off like these shows. However, halfway through the making of the album, Harrison contracted laryngitis, which like severely affected his vocal performance for both the album and the shows. Yeah, like unlike today where like any sort of like self-respecting artist like would like cancel or like postpone like the shows until like they got better maybe it was like a different like time like back in like 1974 like where it was maybe like more like difficult to like cancel shows or maybe Harrison just like didn't care really but he decided like to press ahead with his shot vocals and it's got him very very poor reviews and like very much signaled like a downturn in like his career however the album did sell relatively well in in like the US, reaching number four there, and like it went gold. However, it soon fizzled from memory, and then like it also like failed to chart in like the UK as well. So yeah, like it was like a massive like change of fortunes, like considering that it was just four years since his massive breakthrough album. Like as like a solo artist, so all things must pass. So I'm just going to show you the vinyl copy of it here. Here is the cover, and I must say I quite like the cover. It's a little bit quirky, a little bit different, sort of like a school photo with sort of like sort of coloured in and all that, with sort of different um, different wee sort of details about it. I mean, like all like his teachers and that they all have different like shirts and that sort of referencing things about the album and how this is companies as the Apple logo, Dark Horse. Harry Krishna logo and all that. So yeah, like I quite like the cover. And then um, here is the back of it there, a nice picture of George there. I, I believe this um, bag, I believe this photo was used on like a reissue, I think, like in like the 80s, like a budget reissue of it. Um, here is the gatefold here. Nice, nice picture here of like what like I like, assume is like his garden at like Friar Park. And then you also get like quite a few like wee inserts as well with this. We'll say quite a few. You get a lyric sheet here with that same picture from the back cover. And then the lyrics on the back, which is very nice to have. And then also a custom inner sleeve as well. Just so like notes on like who performed on like the songs and that's so, yeah, like this is like a nice touch. And then the record itself looks like this here. So that's one side with George Harrison's face and then the other is like his future wife Olivia's face there. So yeah, it's really nice sort of like packaging to this album, it has to be said. So I'm now going to talk about each of the album songs. Uh, I, I will score each song out of 10 and then those scores will be used to give us a percentage mark for the album. We open up with a piece called Harry's On Tour Express, which I'm giving a 7 out of 10 to. This is an instrumental song, but I think it works really, really well as like the opening track. It's got some brilliant slide guitar playing from Harrison, as well as like saxophone from like a guy called Tom Scott and his backing band, LA Express. And yeah, it is a really, really great song. Like a lot of people tend to not really care for this track, but I really like it. Like it's maybe like a little bit long, about sort of five minutes and that, they could have like cut it down, but I think it really works, a very bright, very fun, happy opening number. Now 
my next song is a track called Simply Shady, which I'm also giving a 7 out of 10 to. Now, I um, kind of like forgot about this song, like in, in like some ways, because I have already reviewed this album, I think like about like two years ago, before like it introduced that like, new scoring system. And like, this is probably one of the songs that like I didn't really care for. But when I came back to it, like I really seem to enjoy it. I think it is a very, very nice sort of confessional song about like Harrison's like behaviour like around this time, like his like drinking and like his drug use and that, and like he's sort of like owning up to like all like these things and that. So yeah, like I quite like it. I, th I think it. I think I think it's got like a great melody as well. The only thing I would say is it is a little bit slow this one because and like I say that because when I actually like was playing like this album, like it just so happened that it was on like a slightly higher speed so like this song was coming like a lot faster than like it actually was recorded and, and yeah like I was thinking this is pretty good like his vocals sound like much better than like I like remember but then I was thinking like it's maybe going like a little bit faster and, and faster so like I played that the original and yeah it kind of sucked a bit out a bit of the life out of this song so had this one be like a little bit sped up it would it, this would have been like a nine hour and and this would have been like a 9 out of 10 for me, but as it is, it is a 7, um, but yeah, it is one of the better songs on the album. Next track is called So Sad, which I'm giving a 6 out of 10 to here. Now this is now this is like a nice enough song, sort of like about Harrison like showing like his feelings towards like a sort of like his breakup, like his like failing relationship like with Patty Boys. Like like it was like around this time that she was dating like Eric Clapton and that and like yeah this one here like he's sort of like say, saying like he's upset uh, like their relationship like has like sort of like ended and that but it really like he doesn't do it with like much feeling or like much like emotion like it's just like it is like a little bit flat this song for me so that's why it is a six out of ten. And then we get probably one of the worst ones on the album. It is George Harrison's, um, shall I say, reworking of like the Everly Brothers classic Bye Bye Love. And yeah, this isn't great if I if I can be honest. So sort of like on this one, Har Harrison changes like the lyrics to like reflect like again again like his like failing relationship and that sort of like lines like she ran off with like old clappers and that of course referring like to Eric Clapton and that. So yeah, um, and like his vocals sound, sound like especially poor on this track. And yeah, it just lacks any energy and like any drive. This or just goes on and on and on for about five minutes. And yeah, really really meandering song and like not very good at all. And now closing um, side one we have Maya Love which I'm giving a 5 out of 10 to. Now this is probably one of like, the only ones like on like the album like as well as like the final track will sort of have like this like religious like theme to them um, like his last album before this living in the material world was very very religious very spiritual album whereas here for the most part like he was like moving like away from that except for this song and like if i'm being honest i'm not a massive fan of it like it's a little bit repetitive lyrically uh, i mean i'll just refer i'll just refer to like the lyric sheet um where is it there it's, it's just at the bottom there and yeah it's, it's kind of repetitive there's not much lyrics to it and like it does feature like some nice guitar playing but like i'll give it that but like again like it kind of plods on like a little bit too long for me and like yeah like it's not much off a track so a five out of ten for my love So now I've only got to side two, we get the song Ding Dong Ding Dong, which I'm giving a 6 out of 10 to. Now this is like a catchy little number, like it was sort of George Harrison's attempt to do like a Christmas song, although this one is like probably more like a sort of like a New Year's song. Like I still hear this one like around on like the radio, around sort of, around sort of like New Year's time, like it's a bit of like an oddity song, like in like many ways. But yeah, it is like a decent track, I think very much like the production is very sort of big sort of wall of sound like I get like the sense that Harrison was trying like to imitate sort of like the likes of Wizard and Slade with like the sort of like the big saxophone sort of like very commercial sort of like hit sound um, with this track and like yeah like it doesn't quite work like it was a single flopped though reached number 38 in the UK but um but yeah it is an okay song a little bit weaker lyrically but a fun song around a 
around the time of New Year. Also has like a really good like little music video as well with, with sort of like Harrison going through like his like career, sort of like dressing up like um dressing up like the early Beatle George Harrison and then like Sergeant Pepper George and then sort of like his hippie like long hair so sort of all the was past George and that so yeah really fun like music video like I would like recommend that like, you check that out and yeah like a fun little like inoffensive number but really nothing much And then we have the title song, Dark Horse, which is definitely the strongest composition on the album. It is like a really, really great song, so like George Harrison basically saying how like he is like a dark horse and like shouldn't be like underestimated. And like very much so, I mean, because who would have thought in like 1967 that like some like three years later he would be putting out the album what many would consider the best, the best solo Beatles album. And yeah, like I think it is like a nice tune where you've got like a great like, band performance, nice flutes as well, add like a bit of texture to the song. The only thing what doesn't work on this track for me is like his vocals. For me, some of the poorest on the album. Sounds very strained. Like in some places, like it works, but for me on this song, it just doesn't. And like the tour would actually be like Dodge the Dark Horse tour and um, by like critics who like felt that his vocals were like absolutely shot. Um, but yeah, this was like a minor hit for George and in like the US reached number 15 there. So yeah, Dark Horse, like a very, very good song um, if like a slightly um, like weaker vocal performance from Harrison himself. Now the penultimate track is called Far East Man, which I'm giving a 7 out of 10 to. This is a collaboration or like more like a co-write with like Ronnie Wood from like The Faces and like he would like later join like join like the Rolling Stones, we all know like Ronnie Wood. And um, yeah, like a really nice sort of like almost sort of soul number, really like calming, very, very nice. And yeah, the only thing what I would say with this one is it is slightly weaker vocals again and like it is stretched out, like it's about six minutes long this one. Um, no need to be that long, but it is a good song for like about like the first or like three minutes. It like really works, got like a nice tune, like nice lyrics and that. Like it is like quite a nice song, but just plods on a little bit. And now we close with what I would say is the weakest song on the album. It is called It Is He Jai Shi Krishna, which I'm giving a 2 out of 10 to. Now I really can't stand this song. It's a very much like it's sort of like a mantra, I think it is like what they call it. It's sort of like a very like repetitive like thing, sort of like he's like dedicated this one like to like Hare Krishna, like and all that. Um yeah, it just kind of drags on like a little pit. Like, like quite a lot actually, sort of like from like the word go, like you're like you're like longing for it to stop, and like yeah, like although it is quite similar like in that like, theme to like something like My Sweet Lord say with like the long sort of like mantra like ah like the end like quite like repetitive. Whereas on My Sweet Lord it works because that's a great song like for the most part, great band performance, great playing. On this one there's just none of that. It very much kind of like ponders on, doesn't really go anywhere. And like, yeah, like at worst, it is just completely annoying and like, um, really, really bad. So for me, it is easy. Jai Shri Krishna is probably one of the worst songs of George's career. So overall, this album would score 57%. Now yeah, this is a rather patchy affair. I mean, like on like the one hand, we do get some tracks that I really like. I mean, like I love the opener, Harry's on Tour Express, Simply Shady, like is like pretty good, and um, Dark Horse and Far East Man being my personal highlights. But there are some moments of just what were you thinking, George, on this album? I mean, like and um, like My Love and My Bye Bye Love. Um, as well as It Is He, just just songs that really like, don't go anywhere, really are like dragged out and like that. So yeah, a rather inconsistent album for me. And like probably would be George's weakest, weakest solo album. But, yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this album review. If like you if I like, have like any like requests for future ones, um, like please leave them in like the comments. I'd also like to know what you think of this album. Like I'm sure this has some like big fans of this album. Like there must be some people like who like really love this out there. But for me, it isn't quite like up to scratch with like some of George's other um, other fantastic material like what he's got. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Yeah.